Right, uh, good evening and welcome to this week's Elliott Wave Weekly Analysis Webinar. Okay, so I always say, okay, my name is Ndibu Victor Mangena, okay, with uh, PIPS Exclusive Forex. So I always say that we are not here to give the Elliott Wave uh, seminar or education or training or anything like that. We're just here to analyze the market. That's all we're here to do. Nothing else. We're just doing an overview of the market. So you decide using your own strategy. I believe most of you that are here are already trading. And so if you like what I'm doing here, you can just uh, incorporate it into your own strategy. Uh, because what I'm doing here is very high level. There is a specific strategy that we use to actually enter trades. Here, I just give the direction. And uh, you know, knowing the direction of the market is one thing. And knowing, knowing how to trade it is, is another. Okay, so let's start with uh, the dollar index. Uh, obviously, the dollar index, uh, as your most most of you will know, that this is a, a basket of major currencies against the U.S. dollar. So this gives us uh, the direction of the market because I mean we know that the dollar is the most traded uh, currency in the market. So knowing the direction of the dollar sort of gives us the direction for the week ahead. So today is Monday, the twenty third of October, and the time in South Africa is. Uh, 17, 1700 p.m. Okay. Right, so looking at the dollar index, we've got an impulsive move to the downside here. That impulsive move has been going on since the start of uh, the year. So the dollar has been on the, on the downward spiral since the beginning of this year. So as you can see that we've got a nice red impulsive one, two, three, four, five here, which we've discussed last time as well. Okay, so what has happened now on the fourth wave, which is the red, is that we had this impulsive wave here. I'm going to show it with a pen. You can see that we've got this impulse here. And then after that impulse, we got this one, two, three here. So this is giving us a nice flag for a sell to the downside. So if this flag is broken to the downside, then the dollar weakness actually starts. So last week, I actually said that uh, after we, we were here after the breakout, we, we, we broke here. We broke this flag here, and we thought we were actually ready to go. But now it's making a flag under the trend line, which is an even better confirmation that uh, the dollar may be weakening. And the reason why I do not think that this is a correction, you can see that this is an impulsive move. It's a clear impulsive move. Okay, so an impulse and a correction. Then we expect that after the correction, we get a move to the downside. So. If this flag is broken, then we'll be anticipating that the dollar will be weak in the in the coming weeks or coming days sessions. So we cannot talk about the dollar index and not talk about the euro US dollar because it is the complete inverse of each other. Okay, so as you can see, it's just that now here I've labeled it in a different color. This is in yellow. Always, this is in yellow. The red degree in this case is lower than the red degree in the in the previous chart. So Look at the simil similarity here. Let's show you the similarity. This is this whole thing here. It's your way four. This is your way four that is currently playing out here. Okay. So after this way four, what is happening? We got an impulse. Let's clear everything out here. We got this impulse here. And what's happening after the impulse? We're getting a correction. One, two, three. So that's why I'm projecting here that we may come down here slightly, just break this here, and then we go up. Okay? So then that will mean that dollar weak, euro strong. That is if this plays out. But uh, if you remember, if you've watched the video last week, there's, uh, there's another alternative for the euro that the euro can take. But uh, that alternative is not very probable. And this is, it is this one here. Okay, let's take that off. So another alternative will be that we got this one to, my pen is just a bit jumpy. We'll try to draw it slow. It's, we've got a one, we've got a two. Let's just fix the pen quickly. Right, so we've got a one here. It's getting worse and worse. <laughs> right, so we've got a one. 
We've got a two. We've got a three. All right. So after this three, this could be the possibility that we're getting this expanding flat here. You see that this correction is opposite there, the main swing. This opposite this, the, the main swing. Okay, so the correction is supposed to be in the opposite direction of the prevailing trend. So here, this is in the opposite direction of the prevailing trend. This is in the same direction. Okay, so if this is in the same, dire same direction, I usually call it a X correction. Uh, let me label it with a yellow color. So this will be an X correction. And this one, that is in the same direction, uh, opposite direction, will label it a W. And this one will be the sub, which is the X. So what could possibly happen here is that you could have this one doing this. So you would have that completing in red. And then this whole thing will give, will give us a WXY. I actually did this one last week. So you'll see that we have only one, two, three waves, right? So that's the first correction, which we label a W, and then there's a, a connector, which we always count as one wave, even if it's three, if we're doing a W, X, Y. So this is a W, this is a X, and this is a Y. So this will just be in the lower degree. So we already have this one playing out here. We already have this one playing out here, which can play something like this. And you can also get something like this here as well. This is not gonna go back there. All right, so you get one, two, three waves. So even if it's a WXY, it's still three waves. And after that, then the euro may be ready to go. All right, so but what will give us direction here is this. This is what's going to give us direction. What, what happens when we get around this area? And this is where we are right now. Okay, so if we start getting some sort of a, let's do this uh, pen here. If we start getting here some sort of a flag here, then we know that this is ready to continue with the move up to the downside. If not, if not, this will reverse with an impulsive move. If it starts doing that with an impulsive move, then we know now that this will then be a one, this will be a two. And then we start in that wave five that we're looking for complete that wave five. Remember we are in wave four? We're in wave four. So that WXY I was talking about will complete the four and then we'll, we'll then go for our wave five. Okay? So that's what we'll be looking for. So there's two things that we'll be waiting for. Either a, a sharp reversal here, we get an imp uh, a, a correction and then upside. If not, you start getting a flag here Let's clear that. If you start getting a flag here, then you know we're going to do that W, X, Y that I was talking about, and that will be a whole way four, and then only then we will, will, will we go. So we know that we're waiting for upside here for way five to uh, start playing out, but we don't know when just yet. Okay, so that is uh, Euro, US dollar. All right, so just to do a bit of uh, post analysis here, let's look at uh, Pound New Zealand. This is the pair that we discussed at length in the last webinar. Okay, so if you look at Pound New Zealand, it's a very interesting pair. I just want to show you how we traded this and how we trade in our group and how understanding the structure can help you to be profitable. Okay, so I did this pair a couple of days leading up to the actual trade that we, we took last week and it paid us very big. All right, so we had here an impulse. We had an impulse. Let's just get the correction in the different color. One, two, three. Uh, sorry, just um, just gonna mute myself out quick.
Just give me a second, guys. I'm just going to pause uh, quickly. My mouse is very jumpy here. Yeah? So. All right, sorry about that. All right, so let, let's continue. So this, this is how we were looking at this pen all along. You get an impulse here. You see, we got the impulse, we got a correction. One, two, three. Another one, another correction. One, two, three. What happens after that again? We get another impulse. What happens after that? We get another one, two, three. So it's just, it's just, it just kept repeating itself. Every time it, it, we got an impulse, we got, every time we got an impulse, we got a correction, and then we got an impulse. So the same thing was happening here. I mean, it has happened already three times. We're not going to miss it the fourth time. So we get the impulse again the fourth time. We got the fourth impulse now. So after the fourth one, this is what we were anticipating. We were anticipating that we were going to get a one, two, three. Right? So when we were getting this impulse, we knew that something like that is what's going to happen at any moment then. And we even had a wave count, one, two. You can see that this is a wave two. This correction is wave two. And inside the wave two, we were having a lower degree, one, two, in red, yeah, three, four, which was what we were trading here. We were trading this red degree. Okay? So this is what we were anticipating, a one, two, three. Okay? We actually even shorted here and got this trade here at some point which was a short trade. We knew what we were doing. We knew we were shorting here and we were going to be buying here. Okay? So we actually bought... We actually bought it here thinking that we were ready to go. Okay? But it actually didn't go all the way. So after it went, we've got a strategy. If you, if you, buy, if you buy it here, after a couple of pips, you just need to move your stop to break even. So it went... I think over 100 pips. Most of us in the group were over 100 pips in profit. I don't know if all of us gave it up, okay, but we did buy it here, went 100 pips, and then came and took off all that 100 pips, break even. Okay? That's fine. Break even is fine. I, I would rather have, I'd rather have a break even trade than a losing trade. So, what does it do after that? Actually, after that, it actually reverses. And then we started getting this triangle here. See here, I started getting this triangle. I'm going to clear everything here. I remember I actually posted, if I can just label what the triangle looked like, what we were focusing. This is how structure changes, but it did not change the bias. So this was our A, B, C, D, and we were anticipating that after E, No, this is not right. Okay, after E, we're gonna we we're gonna go to the upside, but that triangle was actually not the correct structure. Even if it was, it looked alright to go here at the at the wave E, because when this wave E was here, you can see here. If you look at the B here, this was broken. I don't know if you can see clearly. You can zoom it in here. You can see that this level here. This level here was broken here. And if that happens, it means the triangle was invalidated. So we changed from this one, two, three that we were anticipating. One, two, three. We still made, him, made money going down. We went up 100 pips, take, got taken out. All that 100 pips gone. I let it all go. That's fine. And then we saw a triangle starting to play out. But the triangle was invalidated when this B was broken. Because according to the rules, this is not supposed to break the B on a triangle. Otherwise, this is no longer a triangle. Yeah. See here. So this was no longer a triangle. So we had to change the structure. So this is how the structure changes. And this is, where the, this is the interesting part. Okay. So this is what you have. You have this impulse. And remember, this impulse is happening within a correction. And after that impulse, you get this regular flat. One, two, three. What is this regular flat correcting? It is correcting this impulse. 
All right. So what should happen after the impulse after the correction? You get an impulse correction. What should happen after the correction? An impulse. Right? But what is this impulse? What is this what now? Now you've got an impulse correction and an impulse. So this thing gives you a three wave structure. So it's one, two, three. Okay, so that's when we knew that now this whole one, two, three was making a regular flat, and any touch of this blue line was gonna uh, we're gonna get the impulse. Same thing that I'm anticipating with the Euro US dollar. We're supposed to get an impulse as a, a very strong reversal move, move in here. Because you now they have this larger one, two, three. Okay. So after that, we actually got the impulse that we were looking for. But remember now, the main impulse is this one. Was corrected with a yellow. So what were we anticipating after that? We're anticipating that we are going to go. Okay. But then how do you trade it? Knowing the direction is a different, it's one thing. Knowing how to trade it is a different story. Okay. So we're just going to pick the bottom here without knowing. What if you just bought here and then it kept going? So here it went up. And if I go down to the lower time frame to the one hour, this is what we were looking for. Because now we know that we're anticipating an up move. So it was simple. You just wait for this flag. An impulse. We actually bought this on the 15 minute chart. Impulse, we bought here at 184. We actually had a buy order there. 184, it goes. Those who missed the trade, we got another flag. We bought it here. Okay? So those who were buying it here, we're putting a stop loss here. Those who bought it here, we're moving out the stop loss to break even. We just let the trade run. Two days, 500 pips. It just went like that. Okay? So this is, this is what we called a trade of the week. 500 pips, two days. It just went. And I don't even know what the news were at the time. And this, this if, if I can just show you what the plan was. This is what the plan was from the beginning. Can you see that this was the plan? So we saw the impulse. We did a one, two, three. Impulse, one, two, three. You see, I even wrote here, it's factors. Similar things are happening every time. Impulse, one, two, three. Impulse, one, two, three. Here we sold. We got this straight to the downside. Okay, but as you've seen in the chart, this thing went like this. And we, th we now thought that it was making a triangle which it didn't because now it broke down here. But when it reversed, we knew that it had made a complex, a complex B correction, which was something like this. Impulse, one, two, three, impulse, and then we went. See? So we knew everything that was happening here. Even if it was going down, up and down, we were not worried. We were just looking for one thing and one thing only, the impulsive moves. You do not want to trade in these corrections. You don't want to trade in these corrections. These are not useless moves. This is where account gets blown. You want to trade the impulses. Okay, if I just clear everything and show you how we went through the structures, we were even looking at We're even looking at a gutly within this triangle. See here, this is actually the buy area. This is where this pair reversed. Okay. It reversed though here, came back for the triangle. And then that's when we saw that it was making a complex B correction. And here's the correction. As you can see here, see now. Here, it was just a matter of time. We were just waiting to pull the trigger as soon as it gave us this impulse. Because we understood the structure. We got the flag. In fact, we actually got two flags. Some entered two trades. Okay? Some entered three. Because when it reversed with an impulse, some bought. I actually bought because I was, that, I, was, I, was, I was waiting for that reversal. I bought here. We got the flag. Moved my stop to profit. Took another trade here.
got another flag, and it another trade. So after this, we're running three trades for 500 pips. Okay? So how did we know when to, when to take profit, when to, when, where the target was? And I know this is easier for you to see after we've done it. So this is how we projected the target. We knew when we were going to take profit. And we took profit last week when it hit 190. And this is how we did it. And this is something that we teach in our classes that you, most of you would not know. The reverse fit from 3 to 4 at 1,618 right at the peep. This was a textbook trade according to our strategy. Look at this, at a 1,618, exactly there. Minimum, a wave 5, our wave 5 is not valid until it is 1,618, at least minimum of the reverse fit between 3 and 4. Okay? Hope you learned something with that. So that's how we projected it. So now we'll be looking for a move to the downside. But we do not just buy, sell because uh, it has reached the end of the cycle. Because this is actually not even the end of the cycle for this one. It's not even the end of the cycle for this one. Because this is only a wave three in yellow. We still need to get a wave five. So what I'm anticipating is a big sideways movement. It's a big sideways movement, uh, move, correction to give us a four. Remember, we got this four, which was a sideways, but it's a red four in the lower degree. Now we're getting a bigger degree four. So after this, if we get this, this can, can take a couple of days, weeks forming. And we're not going to be trading this until we get a confirmation of whatever correction is going to form in here to give us a wave four. But we know when this wave four is completed, we're going to get a very, another strong, impulsive move to the upside. So this is why it's important to know what is happening with the corrective structures. And when you understand them, the corrective structures, you trade with confidence. Okay? So another one that we were trading was uh, Euro New Zealand. So Euro New Zealand, I was, we were also looking for the fifth wave. And this one was a textbook stuff as well. Just to take you through the previous post, and I was posting this on Facebook and on, on the free groups. So this is Euro New Zealand. You can see the plan here. I was, I was just waiting for wave five. It did not actually go here. After this, it actually went down some more and, and corrected some more. Okay? That was the plan. This was the, actually the first plan before it even started. It gave us the, that impulse. So we were just waiting for this wave five. And look how that wave five actually plays out. Right up to the projected target. And this is how the target was projected. If I just switch everything off, and go to the daily time frame. Just go to the daily time frame here. Look how interesting this is. So you've got this whole impulsive move that took forever going down here. After that, you got a correction. A, B, C, and this C, this A and C are exactly equal, which is where we took profits here. That's, that's why we were looking for this wave five. It was not finished. We've been trading this pair from here and these things. And just last week, we finished this move off. Because we just had a impulse ABC, simple as ABC, right? So if I just switch on the labeling just to show you how we projected that, you can see that that move was projected right there, right there. So if you want to learn Elliott wave, don't just learn the direction and the wave count. You need to know where the turning points are, where the feed levels are. And that's what we that's what I teach in my in my classes. Okay. So you, when you know these things, you trade with confidence. You, it doesn't matter what retracements happens here. And you can see that we had a very deep one here. If I just go to the four hour time frame, we had a very deep retracement here. Just loading a bit slowly.
This one could have gotten anyone to panic. You can see it was, it looked like it was over. But if you're taking this trade, you forget about it. Okay? You forget about the trade, set and forget. Went, big retracement to the target, to the pip. Okay? So that's how you trade with confidence. When you know what retracements are happening, what corrections they're making, then you know. But if you don't know, you're just going to live in hope. All right, so let's continue with the rest. US dollar CAD. So US dollar CAD, if I just switch off all these labelings here, so I always uh, say that uh, the labelings are not very important. It guides you in your analysis. But this is how we trade at this pair, easily. Impulse. Look at this, impulse, simple impulse. And I will see that every correction that is opposite the impulse, I'll label it with a red color. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay? Every correction that is in the same direction as the issuing, I'm gonna label it a yellow. I'm gonna label it a yellow. See how simple this is when you look at it. Okay, so this gives you W. The first correction we call it a W. Next one is a sub connector or a connector. We call it a X, double XY. Then another connector, another X. Another, another correction, we call that our Z. So we know Elliot only identified that there can be uh, three corrective structures in combination. Nothing more than that. So we know when we get to Z, it's only one way and one way only. That is the same direction as the prevailing impulse. And this is how we traded this to the downside. So what is happening now here? So this impulse is not actually, was not complete. The cycle is not complete as, as per our projection. We still wanted it to go a thousand pips more. But this is what is happening now. It doesn't go in a straight line. So this is what is happening. We've got this impulsive move here to the upside. Made this correction. So I'm anticipating that we're going to get a one, two, three wave move before the impulsive move goes and completes its move at 1,55. Doesn't happen at 1,155. As I say, does not happen in a straight line. So now there is this nice trade here that one of our admins in the group has posted. There's that trade that is worth over 200 pips to the upside. So if I just go to the four hour chart, focusing on this area here. We actually thought this was a corrective structure when it started for me. But that's easy because you will always know what move it is making. I was actually not interested in this one. You can see that we've got a one, we've got a two, we've got a three. And this is a contracting flat. After it is broken, we go to the upside. So we're anticipating that you're gonna get something like this, a one, a two, and then a three. Somewhere around the 128, 129 area. That should be the target, okay? So that's uh, US dollar cat. So the only thing that you can do now, because this thing has already gone, Wait for something like this. Let me go to the one hour time frame. It has already left you. If you really want, if you wanted to enter this one, you would have entered it here on this impulse. So the, the reason why I didn't enter this was that this looked corrective. And this is what I, this is what, this is what I actually thought it was gonna do. Actually, I thought it was gonna make this flag to the downside, okay? But then that's changed when it made this strong candle to the upside and made the correction which was telling us now that we are going to the upside. So this was the best place to enter this pair with your stop loss just here. Uh, so you probably be over 130 pips in profit. Okay, so it's a bit late to enter this one now until you get something like a nice corrective structure to the upside. Okay, that's uh, USD like CAD. 
US dollar in New Zealand discussed this so many times. Okay, we'll go at it again because everything that we've discussed so far, all the analysis on this space so far has been spot on. Okay. So this one is also simple. We've got this impulsive move to the downside. You've got a correction, A. You've got a B, and that's one, two, three waves. What are we anticipating? We're anticipating a C. And that C, and that C should be equals to the A, yeah. But this A, interestingly, is forming a diagonal. And if you're getting a diagonal in with A, you will know that it is a leading diagonal. A leading diagonal happen in wave A and in wave one. Okay, so this is a nice leading diagonal in wave, in wave A. All right, so you've got A, you've got your B, you're waiting for your C. So I'm not looking for cells on this pair. I'm only looking for buys. Okay, so as I said, even the last time, you can see the fractals here. You've got an impulsive move to the upside. After the impulse, what do you get? You get a correction. Sorry, my mouse is just a bit jumpy today. I'm drawing like a first grader today. Okay, I'm gonna try and draw it slowly. Right, impulse and the correction. So here we also get a impulse. And this correction. Striking different striking similarities here. Look at this one here forming a gutly. This one here forming a gutly. What happens after the gutly? It went. What are we anticipating after the gutly? It will go. Where is it going? This one was going to complete wave A. This one, we anticipate that it's going to go and complete wave C. But it does not go in a straight line. You must remember that. Look how this one went. This one was very slow. Actually making another diagonal in there. Okay, see there's a deep pullback there that can scare some. who don't understand what's going on. Okay, so you can see very slow, very slow until we go this way. So this is possibly what could happen here. It will also possibly going to be very slow all the way to see so it can take cover let's just see how long it took to complete this one it took uh, from the gutly to the completion of the gutly took 220 days 220 days that's a lot okay so the same thing can happen here so you trade you don't have to you don't even have to trade take this trade in one chunk you can take it in bits and pieces every time you get a correction you buy Okay, so if you go to the lower time frame, you're gonna get tag, uh, smaller, smaller targets. So that's how you will trade this one. So what is happening now, yeah? So something else that I didn't show that is interesting. This, this actually reverses at the 78 FIP. We are currently around the 78 FIP. Okay. So we're anticipating that we're gonna go. But we do not just buy because we're in this area, we need to get to get confirmation. Okay, so if I go, I'm gonna clear everything and just uh, come down to this area. And just show what I'll be looking for, for me to get going with this pair. Okay, let's do that. This is what I'll be looking for. Okay, I can switch on the labeling. I'll be looking for something like this. You can see here, I've got an impulse already. So I'll be looking for a clear impulse, something like this, which I already have here, and a nice corrective structure here. So after that corrective structure, then I'll be going long, okay? 
So even if you go to the 15 minute chart, you can actually see this clearly in the 15, on the 30 or the 15 minute chart. Let's go to the 15 minute. So you see, those who've been asking me which time frame I trade, I trade all time frames. Mostly the higher time frame for direction and the lower time frame. Now I'm on the 15 minute chart. If you're aggressive, you can go and buy it there. You can see you're getting a nice flag here. Okay. But this could just be doing something like this. Must just be careful. Here, you've got a one. You're going to have a two. You're going to have a three. But check here, you've got this here. Look carefully. You got this initial impulse. It is being corrected by this green. You see here? Let me switch off all these lines here. So you can see. And let me redo it again so you can see it clearly. Because this is important. Because buying it here doesn't mean it may go. You need to understand what's going on. All right, so. Let's just get that uh, color. Let's just indicate the impulse first. We've got this impulse here first. Okay, I'm going to do it with a straight line. Okay, we've got an impulse here. In yellow. Okay, so this impulse is being corrected by this one. So it brings an impulse, and this one makes the impulse in the opposite direction. So which means this is starting a correction to correct that. So you will see how this will end now. All right, so we get this flag here. Let's show the flag in green. You see that we've got an impulse here. So what happens after an impulse? We get a Correction, and then after the correction, we get a, another impulse. So you see that this red is actually correcting this green. Similar to what I was showing you with uh, Pound New Zealand. So this red is correcting the green. So, so it's green, impulse red. What should happen after the impulse red? You must get a green. How should it look like? Something like this. All right, so after that, this green is correcting the yellow. What should happen? Yellow, green correction. What should happen after the green correction? Impulsive move, yellow. Then we know that we are going. And what is this in between here? This will look like a, a bigger flag. Remember, I'm in the 15 minute chart here. Okay, so what you would be looking for after this whole structure completes like this is a nice flag here because you know after this, then you are really going. So that's how you trade the 15 minute chart. So these patterns happen in every time frame. So here, uh, let's just get the green right. So one, two, three, green, correcting the yellow. So it's yellow impulse, green correction, yellow impulse. Green impulse, opposing the yellow, red correction, correcting the green, and then the green impulse. Okay, so that's how you We'll be looking at this. So a lot can still happen here. That's why I say be patient. You don't just come here because it's in the zone and then you want to buy. Because you're going to buy here. It's going to come and you're going to reverse. It's going to take you out. And when it takes you out, then you're going to worry and then you're going to start giving up on the trade. And when it actually starts going, we know the direction is up. But by the time it starts going, you've already lost money. You're not interested. Some actually even decide they don't like this pair anymore because it doesn't like them. No, it's not the pair. It's the way you're trading. So this, you must anticipate this. So this, there can, be, uh, there can be a whole lot that goes on before we actually go. As I've shown you with the pound New Zealand, a lot has happened before we actually uh, got that impulse move. So you can buy this because it can go straight. Buy this when it goes a couple of pips to the upside, maybe 40, 50 pips, put it on break even, see what happens. If it goes, then that's fine. All right, so that's New Zealand. US dollar, okay, let's clear all that, okay, we'll come back to gold, we'll do US dollar za, get out of the 15 minute chat, I've just sent out the forecast to the premium group this morning, and this is what it looks like, we've been forecasting za correctly for the past 12 months, okay, so and this is the this is the forecast here. 
this is the whole US dollar Zara focus. You can, uh, when you watch the recording, you can press pause and take a snapshot of this uh, of this chat. Okay, so a lot can still change here on this chat. Let's just take this off and just show what the analysis was here. So US dollar Zara has always been on an impulsive move. Since availability of uh, internet market data, Around 1994, this pair had never seen a correction, a down move. So it has just been on and up. So I always say what goes up must come down. Okay? And that's what happened with the uh, US dollar, ZA. So the dollar, the US dollar actually went down from 2016 January, it has been going down against the, the US dollar, uh, against the rent, South African rent. But that whole move, as you can see, this whole move, it's just one hello of a big correction. And this is where my specialty is, understanding this correction, because I know when this correction is over, it's time for a lot of pips. See here how long it took. It, it, it took almost two years. We're in 2017 here, towards the end of 2017. This move started 2016 January. So almost two years we've been correcting. Okay. So the only time that you're going to get some, we want to trade something like this, something that just gives you these nice impulses. See here, just get corrections, then you go up. Nice correction, you go up. Nice correction, you go up. Nice correction, you go up. Okay, correction, you go up. Correction, you go up. Every single time, that's what has been, that has been happening. Okay, so we want to get to that point with the, with the US dollars, but it's not time yet. All right, so this is what, the, what is happening. You get a straight line here. Do it with a different color. You can see here we've got, uh, well, let me clear all that drawings. So show the impulse again. That's that long term impulse. After the impulse, we started getting a correction, a zigzag correction here, like this one here. One, two, three. And this first correction, we actually called it a W in this degree. It is in this higher degree, it's a W. Uh, let me switch off the labeling because it may confuse some of you. All right, so that's the first W. Then after that, everything that is in the same direction as the trend, you can see that this correction, uh, you can see that this correction is in the same direction as the prevailing trend. See here. All right, so after that, we are anticipating, this is what I was anticipating. I was anticipating that we're going to get something like this. When it came here, I thought we were going to get something like this and a zigzag and it, go and, 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 and it will go down like that. But as I say, it does not go in a straight line. We are actually getting, if I can label it here, the first correction, we call it a W. Let's label it a W. Connector X. Okay, so now we are anticipating another corrective, at least another three, Three wave move. Another three wave move like that. This whole thing is a correction here. Something like this. All the way around the 11 rand area. Okay. And the labeling here, see the labeling just comes second nature if you understand the structure. W, X, why? Now, now I'm mixing up degrees here with colors because I'm just picking any color here. Zoom. So this is what you'd have. You'll have a W, X, Y. What do you have? You've got a zigzag. You've got a, you've got a regular flat interconnector. All right, and then you've got this correction here, which I'm gonna get into and drill into to understand what is going in here. Because I, I was anticipating that we're gonna get a similar correction to that one. I was anticipating that we're gonna get a similar correction to that one, to the yellow one. Something like this, and when it was going up like this, I thought it was gonna just come here, give us a regular flat, and then we were gonna get that zigzag one, two, three, which was gonna give us one, two, three. But you can see that this correction is now extended. So let's come here and understand what's happening with this correction. So I'm gonna clear, I'm gonna clear all this because I'm going to zoom in here. Right. So you see that you see that when you understand structure, 
and the patterns. Just don't forget this is a one, two, three W interconnector. And then that three wave structure that we are anticipating here. So this is that structure that we want to look at here. Now look. We've got So then, uh, okay, I just thought I got disconnected there. I couldn't see the participant screen. Okay, we're still all here. All right, so this is what we have. We've got this impulse here. Look at this impulsive move here. So just remember that after this impulse, we need to get another impulse to the upside. After that move, we get another strong move to the upside, to the downside. It's a three-wave move, but you can see that it's a strong move to the downside. So this is what we are looking for. But before I get to this move, let me leave it for now and explain another move that is in the lower degree. Look at this one here. We've got one, two, three. And that is a clear regular flat. You can see here, doesn't break the top, comes around the area of wave A. So what is this green correcting? Let's put on the red here. This green is correcting this move. That's what you need to understand. What is what correcting? If this is my red impulse, and then I get a red green correction, I must get a red impulse afterwards. And that impulse, as you can see here, is exactly equal. You see that this is exactly equal to that. So I get an impulse correction impulse. But what is the red correcting now? Okay, just the red is there. One, two, correction, impulse. Impulse, correction, impulse. What is this red correcting? Now look for the blue. Impulse, look at this red. It's correcting this blue. Very nice. What should happen after the red? We should get a blue correction. So you can see that I've got a one, Two, three waves in blue. What is this three waves in blue correcting now? Remember, this was my original impulse. What should happen after this impulse? I should get another. So it's the impulse correction and then impulse. And this move is exactly the same as what happened and on, on pound JPY. I don't know if I'm going to get time to go and show that we've got the exact move that happened on pound JPY. I'll try to show you that. You see impulse, correction, impulse. Okay, but what is this now yellow correcting? Yeah, what is this yellow correcting? Remember our original move that we were looking at? Let me do this one in white this time. This was my impulsive move, correction, that regular flat I spoke about, and then now we go to 11. After that, then, then I'll be looking to by the US dollar against the rent for a long time to the 20 areas, but not yet. This is still going to take some time here. But you see how we forecasted here. I understand this structure and I can actually label it easily now. Okay, if I switch on the labelings here and just clear all that, see here, this is my first impulse. It is being corrected by the green. One, two, three. And then the green is being corrected by the blue. One, two, three. The blue is being corrected by this one here, which has been, I didn't label. So all the degrees are labeled. So what am I anticipating here? I am anticipating that the US dollars are. US dollars are. We're going to come down now. I'm just waiting for this flag to break to the downside. And you will see that this thing always does the same thing. One, two, Three, Gatli. One, two, three, Gatli. I wouldn't be surprised if it does one, two, three. Again, because if you look, even if you look here, it goes with Gatli's. One, two, three, Gatli. It's not the only one. There's still more. One, two. And now I'm drawing like a first grader. Okay. Another one. One, two. Three, that's another Gatli. 
Can you see this? This thing just trends in gutless. Trends in gutless. So that's why I'm anticipating now that we're gonna go down with the US dollar. Czar. Okay. Hope that makes sense. That's, so that's just the focus, not necessarily a trade. So we're gonna be, we're still gonna be looking for a trade to the downside on this one. Okay. So even this up move is not the end. Is the, not the end of it. We're still gonna and uh, need a move to the downside, which is our target. You can see that the target is projected nicely at 11.67 here before we get the big move to the upside, which which may happen maybe towards the end of the year. We even have the uh, the, the ruling parties elections in December. So, I, you know, most of you know that I don't really look at the fundamentals, but that could that could spike it. But it doesn't it, it doesn't really matter. The only tool I have here is the chart. I only look at the chart and see what it's telling me. Okay, most of the time the news just give me a bias, and I I start ignoring the chart, and I don't want to do that. So I just want to look at the charts. They give me direction, and I look the at the chart at the at the news later. All right, so that's US dollar. Let's look at gold now. Gold is another interesting one. If we just clear everything here. Actually, all charts are always interesting, especially when you start seeing the structure. Okay, I've done this one uh, last week as well. Let's get a straight line. I think it's easier with a straight line. You can see that. Okay, so how do you label an empty chart like this? I asked this question last week as well. If you just look at this chart, at this empty chart, where do you even begin? So that's what we teach the guys how to label a naked chart. Okay, you don't just come and label one, two, three, four, five everywhere. So this is what you what we're looking at here. Yeah? So we're looking at this higher degree swing correction. Swing. Now I'm using the white color. I don't like the white color. Swing. Again. Now we're anticipating this. We've got this down move. So this is what could possibly happen. One, two, three, before we actually go up on gold. Okay. So why am I looking at this at this like this? Let's just clear everything up again. I'm gonna switch on the layer, the count. The count always makes things look very complicated. It's, but it will look complicated when you don't understand what's going on. Uh, so there's two possibilities here. So this could have ended. This swing to the downside could have ended. And this, let's get the right color now. And this year, we got this impulse last week. And we said, we, we're actually just waiting for a corrective structure before we go long. So the only, the simplest way to trade this pair is just to wait for this, and this is on the daily chart now, is just to wait for this channel to be broken to the upside. I'm looking for upside on gold. Only when this channel breaks to the upside, I get a flag on the lower time frame, then I know I'm going up to break this top here for 376 target. See there, my target is 376. So if I get something like that, a break out of this channel, then I'll be long on gold. Just go for an hour, just to see what's going on in that channel. You can see there's a, there's a similarity between this structure of gold and the structure of Euro US dollar, because they go mostly they are correlated, directly correlated. Okay, so if you look here, we've got a one, we've got a two, right? We're getting this impulse move to the upside. So I would have liked it if it was a bit further down so that this can be equals to that and then only then we go out and we get an impulse it could still happen it could still happen this can still push lower right and then we get the impulse if we get a corrective flag then we'll be ready to buy gold with a target of 376 all right that's gold. Gold usually goes with uh, the commodity currencies, which is uh, Audi and the New Zealand. So if we're looking for long on gold, we're also looking for go for long on Aussie. 
long on Aussie, long on uh, New Zealand. So we've already seen that we've got a long bias on uh, on the New Zealand US dollar. Okay, let's look at the Aussie US dollar. You can see here yeah, again another similar structure. So Euro, gold, Euro, gold, Aussie, similar structure. So this is what you'll be looking for. You're just looking for this channel to be broken here. Impulse, corrective structure, one, two, three. And this one looks like a regular flat. If you get a strong impulse to the upside, even if it doesn't work in the channel up yet, you buy. I'm looking for buy on Aussie. So there's this regular flat. And it's not the only thing that I'm looking at on Aussie. If you look uh, on the higher time frames, go higher. There's a bigger, there's a bigger regular flat. Let's clear all it. You can see here, uh, we indicated that we've got this big expanding flat here. One, two, three. After the expanding flat, we get an impulse with a correction. Textbook stuff. So we've got this bigger one, expanding flat, which breaks the top of the impulse. Let me switch off the labeling because it gets confusing. You've got a big impulse. It's a one, two, three, four, five impulse that we've labeled there. After that, you're getting this expanding flat. Comes, you can see here, it breaks here. Comes down. Expanding flat completes. The impulse resumes. Look at the impulse, it resumes, but then it corrects first. When it corrects, this is what I like. This is confirmation that we're ready to go. If it does that, then we're ready to go. Obviously, you're going to get a whole lot of, maybe a deeper correction there somewhere, but overall, we'll be looking for this move, this A, B, C, many pips to the upside, similar to New Zealand. So long-term strength on the commodity pairs and uh, including gold as well. So to trade this, We put out the labelings. That's what you do. You can see this. This was projected way before this corrective structure even started. We knew that after the impulse, we need to get a corrective structure. All right, so you will wait for a strong impulse move to the upside. Maybe breaks here. That's even better. Get a correction. It's not going to happen, happen the way. I, it does not have to happen exactly the way I'm doing it here. Okay, you can even get an impulsive move here. You get a flag here. Or you get an impulsive move that's stronger and then you get a flag that does something like this. Either way, you only buy when you get this flag because it may just go up and then come down on you and uh, clear you out, take you out. Okay, let's look at other pairs. Uh, US dollar JPY. Okay, so US dollar JPY. A little bit tricky at this stage. Uh, switch off. Is that long term structure? We've got this impulse. Impulse one, two, three. The connector X, because it's in the same direction of that impulse. One, two, three. Okay, and then you get this one. So this one, this is what we initially thought was going to happen. One, two, we thought we were going to get one, two, three. And this whole thing was going to give us a W representing this first correction. And then the X, which is the interconnector, and then the Y. Okay, but it's not happening like that. And it does not change anything at all. We don't even get worried when that happens because... This possibility, this what is happening now is probably something like this. Remember here we're just speculating the patterns and how they're going to play out. And when they become clearer, when the more market unfolds, the more it becomes clearer. So this, was, this is what could possibly happen. As you can see here, this is the top of this thing here. So this red can go 
Choose the color. It's just getting jumpy. This red can come here, just touch here, or can come in here and break a little bit before coming down. And that will give us a regular flat, expanding flat, sorry. Uh, the chart has shifted. Let me move it. Yes, yeah, so, so that will give us a expanding flat or a regular flat. Doesn't matter. So, but overall, our target is around 105, 104 area. So it does not change anything. Our structure still haven't changed. It's just the type of correction that we're getting. Okay. So now. It is tricky to buy US dollar JPY now. As you've seen on the dollar index, we're anticipating that we're going to go down. So I will not be looking to buy US dollar JPY at this stage. So I'll be waiting for sell setups on this pair. So if it does this, and this is the four hour chart, if we get an impulsive move to the downside and we get a flag like this, then I'll be, I'll be in there. I'll be in the cell on this pair, okay? So, but just look at this other possibility here. One, two, three. It could give us this uh, expanding flat here and go up again before actually coming down. Okay, but for now, this is neither a buy nor a sell until we get a confirmation, okay? US dollar JPY. So you just need to wait for confirmation that you're ready to go up. So if you're going up, this is what I'm anticipating would happen. You're going to get this, and then you're going to get this. Come retrust here, get an impulsive move to, to the upside, and then a correction, and then you're going to be, you're going to go. I do not think it will just go straight here. It may come down here, and you can see that you're going to have this pattern here. It can be a expanding or a running flat, depending on where it turns here. All right, that's US dollar JPY. Let's look at any other interesting one. Cat JPY is a nice one. Not Cat JPY, Cat Chief. Actually sold this one last week. Right, so this one is an interesting one. When I say intra by interesting, I mean clear setup. Okay, this is just uh, what I thought could possibly happen. And I'll show you why I was projecting that. Okay, so there's a trade here that is almost that is almost playing out here. So yes, last week, I think Friday. We actually sold this pair here, somewhere here. I'll show you why. We sold it there. So here, there's the clear structure. We've got a clear impulsive structure here. One, two, three, four, five. The way five ending is a diagonal, corrected by WX. WX, which we thought after the WX would go down. So look how accurate this is here. One, two, three, four, five. Let's get the red one. We get a one, two, three correction. Okay, but this correction was too small and you could see that it was only correcting the red degree. It was only correcting this string. So to correct the higher degree, we needed to get a higher one, which is this one, W, this one here. X, this one here. Then after X, what do we anticipate? We anticipate that we will go down. Okay? And that's exactly what happened. Let's switch that off. That's exactly what happened. So it, it started off as a triangle, this thing. So here, this is our X. We're anticipating that we're going to get this X and then down. Let's do this here. So this here looked like a triangle with a flat top as it was playing out. Looked like we were getting something like this. But then we realized that that was actually the wrong structure to look at. It did not conform to the rules of a triangle.
So this is what I saw. If you remember the, uh, the other complex correction that I showed you was on pound New Zealand. Exactly the same thing that has happened here. You get a swing to the downside. You get a, this correction that starts like this. And then you get an impulse. What happens after an impulse? You get a correction. Okay. How does this correction look? One. Two, three, right? So what should happen after the one, two, three? Correction, an impulse. And how must this impulse be? This impulse, this is exactly equals to this. And to the peep at equal legs of that, this thing reverses. So when I saw that reversal and I was looking at this, I solved that, this thing here. I'll show you. I solved. With a stop loss, with a stop here. Okay, but look what happens after I sell. It comes down a couple of pips. I think about fifty pips. I was in profit. It comes and takes me back to negative violently, but does not hit my stop. So this was important to put your stop and you take profit and and stick to it. Because then you are trading technically. Your initial stop was decided based on the technicals you were looking at. You are not putting your stop because it's now reversing. You put a stop because you were looking at the pattern, this pattern, this green. And after this green, you anticipate, you anticipate that you're going to get an impulse move to the downside. So you've got an impulse, correction in green. What should happen after the correction in green? You should get a, 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 an impulsive move to the downside. So now those lines that I was projecting here, this is what I was, I was looking at when this structure was starting to play out. I thought, because now if you look here, this is now 1, 2, 3, eh? W. 1, 2, 3, X. Right? So now we're anticipating a Y here. But I thought maybe that, that X was going to be complex and not go straight like that. So this is uh, redo this. So this X will still be here somewhere, but this is what was was what was or what I was projecting. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then a connector which is in the same direction as the impulse. One, two. Let's do it clear clearly. One. two, three. And then after that, I thought maybe we would get maybe another, another green degree. Could be a regular flat or a zigzag giving us, because as I say, always say, this was going to give us a W and this W was going to be representing the green. Eh? Let's remember the green here. W uh, let's get the yellow X and then Y see here but still that, that was not changing my structure because I was still getting this whole thing as double XY and my initial correction this one, one, two, three larger degree X, and you see, then we are going to go down from here. See, it doesn't change anything. It can make a double correction. Okay, but right now it doesn't look like it will, but we can't rule it out, but it looks like it is confirming a down move, and this is how it's confirming a down move here. It's not confirming an up move. We're getting a flag here. If I go down to the one hour time frame, you'll see that that flag looks very nice. You see that that flag looks very nice. So just buy the break of this year. Okay? We may get, go up first before we come down. But otherwise, this is confirming a very nice move to the downside. And I'll, I'm already short from around here, as I showed you. Took me off 
uh, didn't take me out because my stop is up here. Okay. I'm still in now. My few pips in profit, about 50 pips in profit. If it does this, I'm moving my stop to break even now because I cannot move my stop to break even before I get this flag. Maybe even take another trade if I want. So that's cat chief. Okay. Other pairs to look at pound USD. Pound USD, we already have a trade running on this one in the group. Let's put on the labeling here. Clear structure. You can see here we've got an impulse move to the upside. We've got an A correction. What I'm anticipating now, let me clear it and do it again. This is my forecast. Impulse. Impulse, there we go. Correction A, maybe B in the same color as the impulse. Could come here, could come there, could break there. And come down. But for now, we are trading. We are trading this piece to the upside. As you can see, we're getting a very nice A, B, C. B is in three waves. And you can see here, we've got a lower degree A, B. And the break of this, which is just already broken, getting a nice flag, we're buying the pound US dollar. Okay, only up to here. Okay, we'll project the target as well as the market moves, but we know it's gonna be a couple of hundred pips to the upside. Right, that's the one hour, and that's how we're looking at it. So this is what it looks like now. So I actually bought it when it did this year. When it broke out of here, I bought it there with my stop at the start of there, with a stop just under there, low of the flex, the flex starts here. Okay, so you give it a, some room to breathe. So this flag looks like it was still forming, it was not complete, but I'm not taken out yet. So we're still anticipating a move to the upside. Okay. Couple of news events this week, so this, should, this could move it, this could move it quite, quite a bit in the, in the coming sessions. So that's pound, US dollar, let's look at, pound New Zealand we already discussed, uh, pound chief, let's look at pound chief, it's similar to pound USD, similar structure. You can see we've got an impulsive move, one, two, three, four, five, A, we're anticipating that big, you can see that this one is already broken, you can see it's exactly the same structure, but this one has already broken this B for an up move, so the pound USD should, should follow suit. Okay, this is not making a very nice flag here, but the pound, pound US dollar is making a nice one. So this one, if you get a nice flag, if you're comfortable, you can buy it targeting uh, this area here. This pound chief, next one is uh, pound Audi. Okay, pound Audi, it's a little bit different to the rest. So pound Audi, if I just show you higher time frame. Let's clear all that. That's good, that's good, that's good. Right, pound Audi. Big impulse move to the downside. Look at this nice impulse if you're trading this. This was 2009. Most of us were not trading at the time. I only started trading 2013. So I would never, I would not have seen this. 
and I would not even have known how to predict this move here. So you see here, after this big impulsive move to the upside, you get a one, you get a two, you get a three. Okay, after that, you get another one, a two, three waves. You get that. And then after that, what do you anticipate? You're probably gonna get this very high level now. You're probably gonna get another one, two, three. Okay? All right, so but I don't know. Long term pound, and this is very long term, eh? Taking a couple of months, couple of years. All right, so Let's focus on this area here where we are now. So I want you to focus on this impulse and this correction that, that's down here. Okay, so there is just showing you how to focus, how to get a cycle, because you need to label everything. Your chart must be labeled from all the way from the monthly, sometimes all the way down to the 15 minute or even the five minute chart, because that's how you identify a cycle. Either that or you can identify the, where you are in the cycle by using FIP. So this is that latest swing to the downside that I was talking about now. And see that swing. So after that swing, you can see you get a, a one, two, three. Okay, after that, same direction, one, two, three. What are we anticipating? We're anticipating another red. This is how you focused, one, two, three. We don't know if this is enough correction for this to then go and do this. Giving us a impulse, one, two, three. Okay, but this is where we are right now. So let's, let's go come here where we are. Go down to the four hour. Let's clear all that. So where we are is here. And those who've been with us for a long time know that we've got this Gatli playing out here. The Gatli target is not done yet. This is the Gatli that we we're looking at. If you've been with us for some time, you know that we've got this Gatli X A B e, C. We actually bought this pair here. We bought this pair here on the completion of this Gatli in anticipating of this target here. Target of. This is that I'm projecting it as accurately as I have because this swing does not start here. Just don't want to move. Okay, I can actually move it because I don't have. Yeah, you can see here this one should actually. Yes. Project it properly. That should be the target. So this is why I'm still anticipating that we're going to have move a move to the upside on this pair. Not just about the, because of the gutly. The gutly is just fitting into my wave count. So harmonics is uh, part of my my trading strategy as well, but you can see that how how it fits exactly onto my count. So here's where we are. We are getting this correction now. We're getting this correction. On the break of this, similar to what happened to Euro New Zealand, when we broke out of that correction, then we got this. We were getting a five, but here we're getting a Y. And this Y is going to be worth many pips. And then again, it it does not have to, it does not gonna go it's, it doesn't go in a straight line it may go correct go correct this one was quite quick actually this one was quite quick this was uh during the boe interest rate announcement even though it didn't change i think the governor just mentioned that it was time that we should uh, tighten on the on the monetary policy just those words skyrocketed this nobody knew that he was gonna say that but the chat was telling us that we needed to get an impulsive move to the upside. So here, pound New Zealand, there's a very nice trade going on here. We're on the four hour chart here, you're getting a nice corrective flag here. Uh, getting a nice corrective flag here. It is on the four hour chart 
if you go down lower to the one hour, it's even clearer. As you can see here. And the nice thing about this flag is that it's happening on a trend line. I like flags that happen on a trend line like this. I call it a loading gun. It's just loading here. It's just loading on this. Uh, excuse my writing today, my lines today. You can see that it's broken, but I need a clear break. Okay, but it's, it looks like it's it's, uh, it's it's almost ready. Okay. So you can buy a clear breakout of this to the upside for many, many pips. We're going to hold it for a, quite some time. Okay, I believe there's some news on the pound this week, so I'm going to hold it through the news. Okay, depending on where I'm going to be, I'm going to keep where my, my stop loss to where I would just under the flag here, and I will hold it through through the news. Okay, so that's uh, pound Audi. Let's look if there's any other one here. That's pound Audi. Euro New Zealand, we already spoke about. Euro Audi, maybe will be the last one. Before we look at uh, Bitcoin, maybe, and uh, S&P 500. Let's go to the four hour here. I'm not going to waste time on this one, but we've got a, we're waiting for a trade here. We're waiting for a trade. I think I showed this one is that uh, last week as well. Okay, so this what this one is doing here. Before I start drawing, let's do this. Switch off. You can see I always switch off the labeling so you can see the pattern. So we've got an impulse. For the impulse, you get a correction. Okay, after this correction, then this structure takes a different pattern. Okay, I'm going to show that. So you can see here we've got one expanding flat to no, no, no. doing it wrong. Undo. Let's not get confused. One, two, three. You get the expanding flat in the red degree. One two, three. What happens after that? You get another flat correction. One, two, three. So what you have there, you're labeling it. Okay, you've got a graph, W, you've got an X, you've got a Y somewhere. Okay. And how do you label the internal ones? This lower degree one. In this degree, it's going to be W. Interconnector, X, Y. You can see that this string Y just has two corrections. One, two, three. But I believe that this is actually not completed yet. Okay. I believe that we're going to get something like this here. These degrees are small, much smaller relative to this. So this is what I think will happen. We're going to get, you can see that this is already making a nice flag here. We're going to get something like this. Let's just call this a red degree. Something like that. And that will give us a one, a two, and a three. And all that will give us this yellow. One, two, three. Okay. That's what we're looking at. So the move to the downside, I don't think it's going to go all the way down. It's a short move. Not really short because it's a few hundred pips on this one. This is that we're looking at it on the, we're looking at it on the four hour time frame. So we'll be looking for a drop on this one. Look for a drop of this break of this flag. So when it breaks, we'll be anticipating a move that is similar to this before we resume higher. Okay. So here's a trade.
for the next coming sessions. When it breaks, don't leave it. Take this cell. Okay, if it goes all the way, then you like it. Okay, that is uh, Euro Audi, Euro GBP. Okay, so Euro GBP. So here's the thing about patterns. There are some patterns that I have seen on the charts that are not identified in the in the theory. I'm going to show you now. I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to show you Euro Pound and Euro JPY at the same time. Right. So here you had all this long-term impulse going to the upside. Okay, so after that, you get the impulse to the downside. This impulse is being corrected by this move here. You can see here we've got one, two, three, and then it goes. Let's get a different color. One. Different color. Blue. One, two, three. So on this one, we would have anticipated that would have anticipated in a scale degree. Impulse, one, two, three. We would have anticipated that this will just go all the way down. See, red, impulse, correction in green. We would have anticipated that it goes like this, right? But it doesn't. It goes and takes this top there. It goes and takes this top. Okay? Right, but let me just finish what I want to discuss with this pair, and then I'm going to show you that similarity on uh, pound JPY as well. So here we've got this impulse. We've got this impulse to the downside. We've got this impulse to the downside. which is now correcting here, which could do something like this. Uh, if I'm drawing for a free hand, it's becoming complicated today. So I'm just gonna keep drawing with a straight one. One, two, three. It could come do this, come go do that, giving us a one, two, three, and then we get the yellow one down. See here, yeah. that's what we could get here. Yeah. So you see that we know that it's supposed to go down. So, but don't be surprised if it comes here and then it starts going up. Some of us have bought it right here on the tip of this. Okay, there's a reason why we bought it there because the reason why we bought it there just to show to off track a bit. Sold, I mean. The reason why we sold it there was because of this W, X, Y. This you can see that this was actually exactly equals to this and to the pip. So when it got there, sold. Still in the trade. So if it does reverse here, as it matter, we're still gonna hold it until it goes all the way down. It can go straight or it can go and retrace. But when it retraces, it's giving us an opportunity to enter some more. Okay, so that's how you focused on this one. So remember, uh, let's see. Remember this similarity, impulse, Impulse, corrective structure here, yeah. but this corrective structure just goes all the way and takes the top here. Similar to US dollar or Euro JPY. Okay, Euro JPY. I think I've got about 10 minutes left. But this one is happening, you can see that that one was happening on the daily, this one is happening on the four hour time frame. You see the similarity here. Yeah. Long term impulse. Okay, let, let me expand it a bit so it can be clear. It's clear. See, so sometimes so these patterns are not identified in the in the book. So 
if you're trading fractals, you need to understand that these things repeat themselves. Even if Elliot did not identify that pattern, you can do some work and see these patterns. Look at this one. It has happened before. So if it has happened before, it means it's possible. So that's the impulse. Remember, I had the impulse on pound, J, uh, pound uh, euro pound. Corrective impulse to the downside. It gives us this one here in green. One, two, three. After this, after this, you anticipate that this will go, right? But it doesn't. It actually goes and does this. So I'll be anticipating that it might even come here, take this top, take this top here, similar to what Euro, uh, Euro GBP did, and actually then and reverse only then. See, that, that's how you focused. So the patterns are not only limited to what is on the book. So the book is just the theory. This is the practical, okay? So that's how we focused. And what it looks like here on uh, Euro JPY, we may get a another move to the upside. Come and take this before we go all the way down. Okay. So let me just go down to the lower time frame to the one hour. can see here, this thing is going down very correctively. So when you get this move, when you get this move to the upside, break to the other upside, take it. You take it. And we're gonna be targeting here initially. It's not bad, it's about, uh, you can get about 100 pips there and trail it to take the top there before you take profit. We're gonna to have to take profit. First, we don't uh, let this one run. It's just a quick trade. You can see that it's very corrective. Breaks out of here, buy it. Can happen anytime now. So you can keep an eye on that one. All right. I think most of this we've uh, discussed. I think because I'm running out of time now, I can just do oil and Bitcoin and the S&P 500 maybe. Oil, still looking for that uh, 53 target. That 53 target, I'm not gonna show the whole analysis here, but we're just looking for something very simple here. We just looking for this thing to be here. So we here, break of this should take us up there and that will end the cycle. So the target is still 53,86, around 54 area on oil before we drop. Okay, let's look what's going on now. Yes, so this is what you'll be looking for on oil. A break above that. Break above that. Actually, not like that. Because this is a new impulse here. You've got this impulse here. You've got this correction here. So you look for this flag here and buy it for 53. But it's, it's too short a move to buy this one. Okay, so that's oil. If there's any one more chart that uh, I missed that you wanted me to look at, you can just type it. I'm just going to pick out of uh, whatever you type and then I'll take one of them. All right, so Bitcoin. Okay, so Bitcoin, last week we were here. Said any pull, we actually hear any pullback. We said it's going to be a way four. We did get our way four, and I believe we got the way five here. I don't know if it's complete. We can check it with the FIB. If it's complete, we know how to check the way five. 
it's not it's still missing it still needs to go to 6348 for us to confirm that it is actually a wave 5 so this should uh, correct and still take us to 6348 before we get a, a correction here okay that's bitcoin s and p 500 <laughs> this this thing just keeps on going and going and going okay so now this is how we just make the adjustments with five still not completed we had divergence uh, we had divergence there but that divergence only dropped it slightly but we are still anticipating for a move to the downside. This is not, we're only looking for a sell on this one. So we're only gonna wait for an impulsive move to the downside and a correction, and then we sell it. Okay, that's the S&P 500. Just wait for an impulsive move to the downside. And then if you get a flag like this, then you can sell, but not long term, maybe up to this trend line. See what happens because that could be a W. Uh, X and then, uh, sorry, and then Y, WXY. Okay, so you may get a deeper retracement after it drops down. Yeah, but the SP 500. Okay, so I do not see any chat. On the chat box, I believe everybody has got what they wanted. If there's anything else, I can always just post it later in the groups. Otherwise, I'd like to end it here. I'm going to press pause. If anybody has questions, I'm going to give you guys a chance to have some questions. Otherwise, uh, thank you for attending the webinar. Hope you like it. And it's going to add value to your trading. Okay, cheers. Bye-bye.